This place sucks, said Lars, dramatically leaning against the back of the riverbank. Well, it used to be a good spot, but I agree. It has been a bit slow, I said in response. Lars and Hendrik were two of my favorite fishing partners. We each learned to fish right around the same time, starting with small roach, bream, and perch, then moved up to larger pike, zander, carp, and catfish. We had been fishing the Ghent, News and Canal for the past few weeks, taking advantage of our summer sunshine, but the bites over the past few days had just not been the same. You know, when I was your age, a voice spoke from behind us. It was an older man, gray hair, gray beard, standing behind us with a leashed Keyshawn. My friends and I would fish here at night and see huge fish. The man opened his arms up wide, motioning to their size. Catfish? Hendrik asked. Oh yes, and more. The three of us looked at each other before looking back. But isn't fishing on this bank at night not allowed? I asked the man. Well, it is now, after so many accidents over the years. But if you're careful, I have no doubt you'll find something big. Something to think about anyway. The man trailed off as he turned to walk away. That was weird, Hendrik said as we all took a moment to think in silence. Well, I asked. The two of them looked up at me before Lars shot us a devilish grin. Hours later, as it began to get dark, I quickly packed all of my fishing gear, strapping it to my bicycle before putting my helmet on and returning back inside. Mama, I'm heading back to Lars' house. Hendrik and I are sleeping over. I yelled before shutting the door and hopping on my bicycle before I could hear any sort of response. I rode down our road where I met up with Lars and Hendrik who are waiting for me. All clear? Lars asked as we pulled up. I nodded my head to confirm. Nice! So I told my parents I'm at Hendrik's house, he told his parents he's at your house, and you're at mine. We're all covered for the night of fishing boys, he shouted as he started pedaling forward. We howled to the full moon together in celebration as we rode towards the canal. This would be a night to remember. Riding across the bridge of the canal, we took a turn, riding down the short slope alongside the canal, leading to the water's edge. Stashing our bikes under the bridge, we unpacked our fishing kit, using the low glow of the bridge lamps and the full moon as our light. What's on the menu? Lars asked, turning towards Hendrik. Cut herring, Hendrik replied. Straight from the fridge, he laughed. Hope my mom wasn't planning on pickling it. We all grinned, taking a piece of large cut bait for our hooks before casting it out as far as we could muster. Hours rolled by without any action from our rods. That old man must have been lying to us, Lars said, throwing a rock to the side in frustrated boredom. We all sighed in unison, realizing that he may be right. Do old people just play pranks on young people? It certainly was starting to feel that way. Then, Hendrik's rod tip nodded. Am I imagining things or did my rod move? He asked. We'd all been staring at our rods for so long, it was starting to mess with our mental state. But then it nodded again, and again, until the rod slowly bent over and started being pulled to the side. Grab it! I yelled, pushing him to his rod. Hendrik grabbed hold and pulled up, attempting to set the hook into whatever seemed to have caught the bait. Whatever it was, it was huge. Hendrik's reel was screaming as more and more line pulled out. The fish still pulling reached the surface, creating a wave with its movement, slicing through the water like a blade. You guys, Hendrik said worriedly. We looked at his reel. It was on its last few wraps. He tried reeling, but it was no use. As the line came to the end of the knot holding it on the reel, there was a moment of fright before the snap of the line broke out. We all three fell backwards. Stumbling back up to our feet, we could still see the fish gliding through the water before circling back towards our direction. Faster and faster it traveled until it was just a dozen yards away, and then it disappeared. We caught our breath and huddled together in shock and awe over what we had just witnessed. That was weird, Lars began to say, but he was cut off as an eruption of water spurred out from the river, drenching us with water. A giant, red and black striped eel stared at us from the water's edge. I motioned as if to run, but the eel's eyes shot directly towards me and I dared not move. That's when we noticed the flickering of flame, as a torch was thrown from the bridge up above, directly onto the eel's snout. 
It hit the smooth but thick skin as embers from the fire coughed up into a cloud. The eel didn't seem bothered much at all, but it did provide us just enough of a distraction for a man to come up behind us. Come with me, now, he yelled, grabbing us by the shoulders and pushing us towards underneath the bridge. We followed him, sprinting as a flame up ahead was lit on a standing torch, as another man motioned us towards the door on the bridge's base. The eel made a sharp shriek, then darted towards us, water splashing up as it slithered, very snake-like in our direction. We went through the door as the man followed behind, the other man following in behind him, closing the door. Darkness. We caught our breath, wondering if we had just escaped death or once again wandered into it. Before the sound of a loud switch broke out, revealing a lit tunnel leading away from the door. We looked at our rescuers to find that one was the old man from earlier today. Keep going, we'll need to find another exit, he said, motioning us forward. We followed the tunnel wrapping around and leading down towards another set of stairs, before the lights of electricity were replaced by darkness, before revealing more torches of flame leading to a cave with an underground lake. The two men stopped at the bottom of the stairs, motioning us forward to the lake. As the eel slowly rose up from the water's edge, we looked back at the men, standing guard, as one took up a wet burlap sack and threw it at our feet. Take it, the old man said, pointing at the sack. Empty it into the iron bowl. We looked back towards the lake, where we now noticed a stone altar at the water's edge. I reached for the sack grabbing hold and feeling the wet slithering of movement from something inside. We walked towards the altar as the old man's shouts echoed through the cave. For centuries, the great eel has watched this town, and for centuries we have bargained for our lives. It cannot be killed, it cannot be caught, it cannot be escaped, but it can be trusted. We too have cared for the great eel for the last 40 years, and now you three shall be our replacements. Reaching the iron bowl, he opened the bag, dumping out a dozen wet, slimy, squirming eels. As the head of the great eel reared back before lunging forward with furious velocity, it recoiled from its bite, raising its head straight up, working the eels down its throat before looking back at us. A dozen eels, every full moon, try to escape, and the great eel will find you and take you, like our friend so many years ago, become old men, caring for the great eel, or find replacements, but then you doom them too. The old man trailed off, grinning as he held up a key, dropping it to the cave floor. Good luck, he said, before disappearing into the darkness. The great eel looked at us in the eye, and we knew the deal was final as it slowly sunk back into the water's surface until all we could hear was the beating of our own hearts. The next day we met at school, still silent from what we had all experienced. So what did you do this weekend? A group of girls asked us. We looked at each other but didn't say a word. My family bought a new pony. I spent the weekend riding at the riding club. She followed. We all looked at each other again, rolling our eyes. Yeah, well, we found an underground cave with a lake, Lars broke out, crossing his arms. Nuh-uh, one of the girls responded in disbelief. It's true, Hendrik shot back. Don't believe us, we'll take you there. The girls all looked at one another before starting to grin. Okay, I'll bite. Take us then, one said, walking towards Lars with a bunch of attitude. Well, I said, as all eyes turned towards me. We'll have to wait for the next full moon.